Hey, what's up, everybody? It is your girl, JoJo, and I'm here with the review for whatever the newest episode of Ready to Love is. I hope you guys are doing good today. I know that I have been absent, and when I haven't been absent, I have been late like today, but I am here. Um, so a lot of stuff was going on with my family the past two weeks, and it has not let up, but you know, now we're just a little bit more clear on what needs to be done. So long road ahead, but at least we know what's up. And last week, I just needed a break. I just needed to clear my head. Um, I was feeling a lot of different things. And so I spent a few days um, at the beach, which is only like 30 minutes away from me, but I just spent a few days there. So yes, I'm feeling better. I'm getting back in the swing of things. And I wanted to go ahead and do this review. I did not want to skip another week. So before we get into this week's review, though, I did want to talk a little bit about the last episode of Ready to Love because I started reviewing it. I just never finished. I just abandoned it in the middle and I never completed the video. So I just want to take a few minutes to say I was kind of surprised that it was red over Marvin going home, but Red's days were kind of already numbered. Um, I think that thing he couldn't get over with the thought comment really did affect him a lot. Um, on top of other things, but either way, Red had to go on home. Um, another thing in that episode that I wanted to highlight was Chris. I just hope that Chris is, I'm not going to say done grieving because to me, you can be in a situation where you're never truly done grieving, you know, especially if it's a parent or a child. So I'm not saying that I hope he's done with it, but I do hope that he is not seeking the relationship that he had with his mother or that type of nurturing in a woman, um, unless that woman is having his children. But to be seeking it for himself, I don't want that to be happening. I'm not saying that it is, but I just hope it's a concern, right? Um, also, Aries... I know some people said that they didn't really like her reaction to Chris. I don't really know if Aries likes Chris as much as Chris likes her, first of all. And I didn't think her reaction was bad. I just think Aries might be one of those people who, you know, she. some people aren't as comfortable around tears as others. Some people will immediately embrace you. Other people won't. So I wasn't mad at her reaction. I thought her reaction was okay. Um... What else did I want to talk about from last week? <sighs> something important. Chris. Oh, another thing about Chris. I'm seeing something with Chris. And I don't know if anybody else is seeing it but me. So I don't want to say it. But if you know what you think that I'm seeing, put it down in the comments. And if somebody else mentions that they see it too, we might talk about it. But if not, then I'm not going to say nothing. Okay, and I'm gonna just leave it at that. I'm not saying nothing else. Um, what else? Uh, unique. Unique going home was just, I think it was the right decision. I think it was time for Unique to go home. I think Unique still has some healing to do from her divorce. I don't think there's anything wrong with having uh, boundaries. I think those boundaries have probably helped her to heal. But now we have to figure out how to make the boundaries work with dating and being open to somebody new. On top of that, her only connection was with Marvin, which is not a good connection because I personally think outside of getting that boy off, you know, the baby boy he won't, I don't really think Marvin is interested in anybody um, like that. Even though he says he wants to get married, I don't know. It's just very hard for me to believe for some reason um in addition to that i want marvin to stop saying that he's trying to start his family baby you started your family when you had that daughter by whoever you had her with all right so your family has already been started you you coming in with family so as the uh, hbic of the women with no children brigade i don't want to hear about your preferences okay you the one coming in <laughs> with the children talking about i just why i prefer women with no children well we don't care all right you better get what you can get because you already started your family. Low key talking about he trying to start his family. You might be trying to extend it, but you already started. Other than that, I think that was really all I had to say about that episode. I'm probably forgetting something. Um, but yeah, 
that, that's all I got to say about that one. Let's move into what happened this week. All right, so it is the ladies' turn to eliminate this week. Philip and Aries go on a date, cute date, real cute. Um, I feel like they vibe a little bit more than her and Chris do. Um, I really love the discussion that they had about children, having children, um, and what some of their non-negotiables or what some of their doubts were. I'm sorry, non-negotiables was last week. What some of their doubts were. Um, they addressed the whole children thing. You know, Aries has two already. And I love that Philip was just like, well, I got my one. And I always said I wanted more children, but I didn't say they had to be from scratch. <laughs> from scratch just made me holler. But good. I, I was really glad to hear him say that. Um, in addition to that, they also talked about whether or not Philip had doubts about her being married two times already. Now, Aries, I didn't know you was married two times. Now, Philip said it didn't bother me, bother him. And I'm just like, hell, it bothered me. What happened that second time, <laughs> Aries? No disrespect to people who've been married more than once, but what happened the second time, Aries? Um, but he's not bothered by it. He's been married once. Um, and now he is a better man and he's, he's here, he's dating for marriage. He wants to get married. So I thought that part was really good. And I thought their date went good. I thought they had chemistry. They seem to really like each other. They said they spend a lot of time on the phone, honey, hours and hours, and they didn't want to leave each other. I said, child, it's always good in the beginning. Oh, it's always good in the beginning on the phone and no, you hang up. No, you hang up. Then it just turned into, all right, then bye. All right. But cute, cute enough. I, I like their connection. All right, y'all, I am confusion. Chris and Sierra go on a date. Y'all remember Chris, right? How you doing? My name is Chris. I'm gonna be joining y'all on this process. They go on a date. And I don't know where we got lost at, but somehow they don't leave the date on the same page. Chris kind of leaves in confusion of whether or not Sierra might be high maintenance and Sierra leaves the date thinking that Chris is might have some insecurities but i really i'm not I, I, i'm i can't figure out how we got there so let, let me let's talk about it sierra wants to go on a date with chris because with a lot of these guys she feels like she's getting too good to be true vibes i, I don't know how sierra is getting that but um she goes out with chris and chris is giving the people jack of all trades and master of whatever his family business is now because that man said he done went to medical school for uh some time and he was gonna be a doctor he did some modeling he in the fashion i said what else you do chris you do it all don't you baby um but sierra is kind of asking him different questions because she wants to get to know the real chris all right she wants to get a peek at him she asks him how he handles relationships like what is his pace and Chris answers that he likes to take his time and he likes to pay attention to that woman and the one, what the woman likes and what the woman desires. And that's when she starts hinting that she loves her a Birkin. You know, she even hits you with, <coughs> I love a Birkin. To me, it did seem like she was hinting like, yes, okay, well, if you pay attention to what I like, I like Birkin. So you trying to do that or what? So when Chris asks her, Okay, so what if I can't buy that Birkin right away? I think that Chris is trying to gauge where she's at with it. Like, what if I can't do those things? Am I disqualified? Or what if it takes me some time? What if I have to get something else? Because I, one of them said that Birkin was like a, a was what, a thirty to fifty thousand dollars? But is it that high, child? I don't know. I ain't never looked at no Birkin or Ken. I don't know anything about it, baby. I, I, I stays in my. I'm a, I'm a case spade girl myself. All right, and I just became one of those. Before that, I was a Shein or whatever purse I found on sale. <laughs> girl. Down to the Wally World, even. But yeah, uh, now if I wanted to get fancy, you know, Target. But I, I just. It just, it, the wires got crossed for me. Sierra ends up saying, oh, okay, well, you know, a lot of guys feel threatened by the things that I can buy for myself. And I've had a lot of issues with that in the past. And to me, Chris might be coming off with some insecurities that he has um, about himself. But I, I can afford certain things. And a lot of guys do tend to get insecure about that. I think both things can be true. Chris can be 
have dealt with women who were concerned with material things only. And Sierra could be one of those women who can afford her own material things and men assume that she is concerned with material things only, but that's not her. Both of those things can be true. I'm not really sure why it didn't come together on the t at the table. It confused me. Now, Sierra, I like Sierra, but any date Sierra goes on, she has come off very, very jokey to me. Like she, her way of flirting and getting to know you, um, it, it has a lot of comedy to it. And it's starting to make me wonder, is she immature herself? Now, I don't know that to, to be a fact, but I just, I'm, I'm starting to wonder that. And girl, if you can afford, if you can afford these Birkins, uh, what you doing for, who you styling? Child, I might need to switch my whole career. I can't style nobody, y'all, but I wish I could. So I wish I could. Go ahead, Sierra. But yeah, something didn't come together on that day. It was just, what, what did y'all think about it? Marvin and Katharina go on a date. And um, Marvin said that Katharina was one of his strongest connections. When? Baby, when that happened? When did, when did Katharina become one of your strongest connections? Because I knew nothing of the sort. I mean, I know they was at the hold down, you know, they had some, I didn't feel like she was one of his strongest connections, but I guess, um, Marvin doesn't want to get eliminated and you can tell, um, yeah, there was a lot of, um, dead space when they were talking. I felt there was some dead space, but Katarina has questions and it was a good question. It's a question that I've been wondering about Marvin. Can you be in a committed relationship? Now I know that that is, um, I think that that is showing probably some bias on my part as well as others because just because you're into kinks does not mean that you don't want to be committed to some, to one person and get your kinks off with them. But I think because a lot of people are not familiar with these kind of alternative lifestyles. Okay, we ain't all over there on fat life now. Um, you know, we just assume that those people make those people. See how that sounded? That's that if you're into kinks and you're into a certain lifestyle that you may have an insatiable sexual appetite right and that's not necessarily the case and so to assume that about marvin um it's definitely showing a bias on I, i'm just gonna speak for myself because i thought that too Marvin says he can definitely be in a committed relationship. He wants to be in a committed relationship. He even feels like him and Katarina have a lot in common and he is thinking about the next step. He, he's ready to start a family. Katarina doesn't believe him. I, I'm not gonna say I don't believe him. I just don't think he's that interested in Kat. I don't think Katarina is his number one. I don't think Marvin has that many connections and I think Ready to Love set him up when they brought him on the show period because they had to know that with his profession and the things he does I'm not saying it's fair that people probably were not going to take him seriously so I blame ready to love all right I blame ready to love for this but you know hopefully uh Marvin's one is out there but I, I think he I think he gonna be up again for elimination very soon okay had they had they liked red a little bit more he probably would have been up then what did y'all think about their date and do you think that Katharina is his strongest connection okay um so we kind of get like two dates at once going on even though there are two separate locations I'm gonna address Kira in a minute but I, I do want to say before I even start talking about Kira, I don't know how Kira has made it this far because I, I can't remember if I said it, but I thought I said it some weeks back. Kira has a connection with nobody. Nobody. Marvin has a connection with nobody. Um, he he kind of had one with Unique, but I feel like Kira might be the only person that has made it this far and I just don't feel like she has zero connection I feel like she has zero connections with anybody at this time even less than Katarina and she had a head start um so I don't know how she's made it this far but first I want to talk about Janelle and um Q's date the date was cute uh the doubts that they discussed were the age difference of course um, Janelle is interested possibly in having children because she did say something about starting a family, but they also bring up adoption again. I really do think adoption is her main point of interest to which Q is not opposed to that. Um, uh, I don't know. I, mean, I don't, 
I think age gaps do get different as you move along in age. 20 and 30, that to me is can be like if you one person's in their 20s and one person's in their mid 30s, that can be a significant age gap, uh, age gap, age gap and uh, a whole lot of differences in maturity. Once you get into your 30s, mid 30s, eh, you know, there could definitely be some differences there. And honey, once you get past about 35, 36, baby, everybody, everybody where they about, about where they going to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, however, when we're talking about starting a family, it's a little different, right? There, there are certain things that have to be discussed. Um, I've even noticed there's a difference with men and women. I've noticed that more women are open to the idea of possibly adopting men not so much you know they want their own children their own seed you know biologically they want to spread that seed so adoption is just not something that I hear a lot of men um be open to but it's not to say that they would not do it I just don't they don't seem to be as willing as I as as I've noticed that some women are to doing it but um Q does give me pause. I'm not going to lie. Just like he gives me the same type of pause that Marvin gives me sometimes. Um, Not that he's not wanting to be with anybody. I think he is. But it almost seems like he's going to get with you and things are going to go really well for the first three months. And then there's going to be like a switcheroo. And I feel bad for saying that because he hasn't done anything wrong right but he does say that he has put the work in he doesn't believe that things like marriage and children take that long so I'm just like (laughs) I mean I guess child (laughs) I guess um and I'm not saying it's gonna take forever but it do you gotta know people all right you you got to know who you dealing with but he says that he has done the work now to get himself prepared for that thing so it's not taking him forever and I can respect that that's good I like that you've been doing the work on your own they do seem to get along well I just don't I'm not sure if I see it happening with the two of them you know depending on the whole children thing and as well as some other stuff moving on though let's talk about Kira and her dates I completely forgot to mention Kira at the beginning of my you know my little mini recap for the last episode Oh, this whole questioning of blackness and if she's into black culture, listen, y'all. I've met a lot of Kiras. I went to a predominantly white high school. I went to a predominantly white college. I have met some Kiras. Um, I don't think it's necessarily all the time that they're not connected to their blackness. However, in Kira's case, it's really interesting that she gets, she's getting so offended about it because she did something similar to Q in the very beginning. Remember when she was like, he just seems like he dates white women. And me being the closest thing to a white girl, like when you make those kind of comments, of course people are gonna raise an eyebrow towards how you feel about your blackness because whether you were making a joke or not, we heard you say it and then you tried to put it on somebody else about their blackness and who they date and what they're into and so now um somebody is doing that same thing to you and it doesn't feel good right so um kira goes on a date with maury murier maurier maurier who's um did y'all see Maurier baby mama talking about him on tiktok (laughs) address what the baby mama said on tiktok maurier but anyway they went to an ice cream shop and she wants to talk to him again about the comment he made in reference to black culture and her blackness and he was like look i just asked her because i'm I'm 365 black he didn't say that but that's what i was thinking everything i do is black everywhere i go my hobbies my people it's all black and i know exactly what kind of lifestyle he's he lives um kira just didn't appreciate the comment um, she doesn't feel like it's fair to address her blackness and the type of things that she in- is into because she's a black person. She is a black woman. Um, it doesn't really matter. There's no connection between them two. I didn't even see any connection when they were doing that whole improv thing. I don't, again, Kara doesn't have any connections to anybody. In my opinion, he, she doesn't have any. She also goes on another date with, um, what's his name? Herbert. 
um herbert you're being told again that you're nonchalant baby what you gonna do what you gonna do about it because janelle told you the same thing last week so you gonna have to if you want to date you got to step it up and you got to start dating around here now the only difference is with kira i just think he ain't hit kira up because again kira doesn't have any connections with anybody and kira doesn't want any connections with these people <laughs> but kira's fun she says she likes to do tiktok dances with her person and so herbert pick her up and herbert's just like you know kira's a good time but i don't really know if we have anything outside of that and i concur um yeah those those were kira's two dates and sorry y'all it got cut off what do you guys think about her dates how did you feel and what do you think about the questioning of her blackness is it fair is it unfair do you guys understand why people are asking was it fair for her to say the things that she said about q early on and i think she's gonna say them again on this episode i'm still watching let me know what you think oh y'all i almost forgot a date janelle and um not janelle um jessica if that's not her name y'all know who i'm talking about and chris they actually went on a date like a little lunch meetup and again y'all this was just a whole episode of people who are not compatible so jessica and chris discussed their doubts and their doubts really just center around jessica's attitude or the way that jessica speaks in jessica's mind she's assertive she's straightforward she speaks very plain she speaks very direct she's not a soft life not soft life but she's not a soft type of girl she doesn't speak softly she doesn't even know what that looks like um chris wants a woman that's gonna speak to him differently when it when they did their little scenario last episode he didn't like the way that she jumped immediately to blame him and she didn't like the way he didn't like the way that she spoke to him um, I understand that when you go to work, you have to be very assertive. You are a businesswoman. You are independent. And I love that. Those are the type of women I'm attracted to. But when you come home, you need to be soft with me. I understand what Chris is saying. Actually, I do understand that. What's interesting about Jessica, though, is that she compares Chris and Marier. But the way that she has a conversation with Marier is not the way that she spoke to Chris in that scenario. I do believe that because she's more interested in him and because she feels differently around Moriere, she doesn't speak to him in the way that she would talk to somebody like a Chris. Now, maybe she doesn't realize it, but I do think she, that, that she doesn't speak hard to Moriere. She speaks directly, but she doesn't speak in a tone of like, defensively I think is the word I'm using is the word I'm meaning to use um I don't think she like him like that and it's okay <laughs> she might think he's cute but I don't think she likes him like that and um, that's fine I don't think he really likes her like that so we can move on let's see who getting who getting sent home this week okay y'all so we get to it we're at that final moment with nephew Tyler Perry the ladies get together he wants to know what went well Janelle says her date went well they addressed some of her doubts around the age gap. Aries addressed some of her doubts around her boys and who was going to come into their lives. Um, Jessica addressed some of her doubts. I forgot to mention that not only did they address her tone, but they also addressed communication. And she found out that she had some stuff to work on because she had a problem with how he communicated, but she doesn't communicate well with him either. And that's because they're not really interested in each other, but I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, then after that, um, who else? They start talking about what kind of things didn't go so well. So we got two names um, specifically that come up, three names, I guess you could say, that come up with dates not going so well. Morier. He didn't do anything wrong. However, he just comes off as the homie. Like he want to be my homeboy. Um, Kira, we're going to address what her problem was with Moriere in just a minute. I'm going to save it for last. Chris's name comes up. Listen, I don't think Chris is a problem. I don't think Chris is necessarily a bad guy. I think when Chris goes on a date, he wants to impress the women that he's with. And so instead of talking about who he is as a person, like his character, um, things he likes, things he values, his hobbies and things of that nature, I feel like Chris starts to rattle off what he has because in his mind, a woman is going to be impressed with what I have. If I tell her I got myself together, I'm stable, um, 
I got land. I work in my family business. I'm smart. I could have been a doctor. I'm also fashionable. I, I could have been in New York. I was, okay, in New York Fashion Week. I think that because he's doing that, people are just kind of like, are you are you some type of politician or do you want to go on dates with me? Do you want to get to know me? And so the way that he's doing it probably isn't the best, but I think those are things that can change, especially if they are addressed to him. I don't necessarily think that Chris is just like some guy that's not ready for um, a relationship. Now, I don't know that, but I just don't get those vibes from him. Then uh, Marvin, okay, Marvin and his kinks and all the stuff he liked to do. He talking about being a stag and liking to watch his partner do. No, <laughs> that's not going to work for a lot of the ladies. All right. So those are the things that didn't go so well. Now, Marier, um, Marier <laughs> and uh, Kira had a discussion, remember, about her blackness and if she liked black culture. And Kira really didn't appreciate that. And so she brings it up to nephew Tommy. Last time I checked, I was a black woman. I am indeed a black woman. So I don't understand why he was saying those things to me. Um, she's continuing to talk about how she was offended and how she just really didn't appreciate it and how it often seems like Morier doesn't even really have time. Like he's just, he's not really all that interested and he's not he, she knows that people are busy, but he doesn't seem to be. And then that's when Jessica chimes in. Well, I feel like people make time for what they want to make time for. Um, when she made the comment about Herbert, was it Herbert that she made a comment about? Or was it Moria? No. When she made the comment about the black culture thing, um, Janelle chimes in and was like, yep, he's about black culture. He about black. And I like that. I like that. Um, they can you can clearly see <laughs> that they're getting irritated with Kira and then we begin to find out why so as they're discussing it uh Kira says Marvin instead of Marier and so nephew Tyler Perry corrects her and says Marier and she was like oh yeah I'm, I'm sorry I, I mixed up the names and Janelle and Jessica are over there making faces nephew Tyler Perry wants to know why are they making faces at Kira right and Kira was like oh because you know I, the name mix up I messed up the name Janelle was like Kira don't don't play with me do not play with me and so Kira's just like what are you talking about how am I playing with you you know I feel like actually during this process you've been very snarky with me Janelle I'm sorry if you're receiving it a certain way but you've been very snarky now I do agree with Kira in the fact that Janelle is a snarky person now I, I don't disagree with that but in this situation um, Janelle and Jessica, they kind of tag team it. You know, they say that Kira doesn't like to be held accountable. That's what Jessica said. Um, they also feel like she's made a lot of misjudgments about people and continuing to do so. You said his name wrong as a dig. You did not forget his name. Just like you want to say, I'm the whitest black girl here. I don't know what kind of accomplishment that is, but you said these things yourself. And now you're trying to sit here and make it a problem that he asked you that question or that he said that about you just like you said the thing about Q, that's what I brought up earlier and how he might not date black women and how he was into white girls. So you trying to sit here and act like somebody's misjudging you. And that's when Kira, she says something else to Janelle. Um, she basically feels like Jessica and Janelle got some type of team going on. And anytime you disagree with them, they let you know that you riding with the wrong team and you got to, they got to let you know and put you in your place. And so that is when Janelle says, you know what? I don't have to talk to you at all because I don't like you and it's getting turned up. And nephew Tyler Perry was like, flag on the play, enough. We don't have to like each other, but we do got to respect each other. I said, boy, you the one to ask. You the one that got it going. You could have just let them sit there and make their little faces and keep it moving. But um, now we know we got all of that out. And it's really time for them to eliminate somebody. But nephew Tyler Perry has a curveball. He is sending two of the men home, not just one. And I was just like, I don't get these curveballs. So I guess two women are going home next week. They better be. So we get the men together and y'all already knew how this was going to go. It's Morier, it's Chris, it's Marvin. Marvin, I agree with. All right. Marvin needed to go. Like I said, nobody's going to be interested in the things that Marvin is interested in. He has a special niche to him and he needs to date a certain type of woman. I don't know why he's sitting there talking about, well, the things that I like to do, the things that I want to experience are going to be with my woman. Even if that is the case, every woman is not going to like people watching her 
um, her man watching her have sex. Every woman is not going to like forced orgasms. Every woman is not going to like, you know, booty worship, which <laughs> I would. But every woman is not going to like the same things. So I don't know why he's acting confused about that. Um, so I knew that he was going to be on the chopping block. He says that he doesn't tell every woman what they want to hear. Yes, 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 you do. <laughs> yes, you do. I, I do believe you do that. So then we get Chris and they're explaining to him. I think it was Kira that did his trying to explain to him that the women felt like he was kind of giving these almost cookie cutter type answers. You know, <laughs> Tommy called him a, a lobbyist. Um, they feel like you're not really being yourself. And he was like, I am being myself. I am being open. I don't know what they're talking about. And I genuinely feels like he thinks he thinks he is like he really does. But from what we see, he's listing off a lot of the things that he's done and a lot of things that he's accomplished. And while that is a part of who you are, y'all know if women was up there just listing off their accomplishments, the men wouldn't be feeling that either. So we just want to know more about who you are. I personally hate that they eliminated two people because I think if Chris would have got the right feedback, he probably would have came back a different guy. Um, but he, he just didn't agree. Then we get Moriere coming off as the homie and he was like, well, when you put somebody in the friend zone, boy, is you listening? Didn't nobody say you was in a friend zone. We said that you was coming off as the homie. I've also figured out y'all that as cute as Lee is, I don't like her voice. But anyway, um, Morier says he knows that he could work on a few things, but he will not be taking back the whole black culture comment because he meant what he said. He about his people and he needed to know what she was about, period. I ain't mad at Morier. <laughs> I'm really not. Um, as far as the whole, uh, well, before I get to that, who gets eliminated? Marvin and Chris. Like I said, I just don't agree with Chris. If anybody should have been up on the chopping block, I personally think Herbert should have been up. And the reason why is because more than one woman told him that he was nonchalant and he admitted that he is not accustomed to dating multiple women. So you come on ready to love, but you're not used to dating multiple women. It's just kind of like maybe you need a stern talking to. In the end, those two ended up going home. Don't agree with Chris. Do agree with Marvin. As far as uh, the argument between Kira and Janelle and Jessica, uh, it did make Janelle and Jessica kind of look like they was going hard, like they were teaming against her because Kira stayed very relaxed. I, but I understand the, uh, the irritation with Kira. I do think Kira is offensive. I do think she's an offensive person. Um, and I, I don't, I think it's fair for Moria to answer that and ask her that question because you know, she wanted to go there with Q. So, you know, you question his like of blackness and they questioned your blackness in general. You called yourself a white black girl, you know? So maybe you shouldn't say things like that if you don't want people to call your blackness into question. But I don't really think that Jessica and Janelle had to do the tag team and they did, but nephew Tyler Perry, you asked, huh? So maybe they did have to do it because you asked them what their problem was, so they told you. Anyway, you guys, I don't want to see too many more spats amongst the ladies. And um, oh, what I did agree with, Janelle, baby, you are snarky. You are. You are a beautiful woman, like I already said. Stop that. I don't know why you keep doing it. But anyway, you guys, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all for the next review. Bye.